All right, so in this video, I'm going to be solving the expression 200 squared minus 199 squared. And to solve this, I'm actually going to be using three different methods. So make sure to stick out for all three of them to find out which method is the easiest for you. So for method one, what I'm first going to do is rewrite 200 squared as 199 plus 1 squared. So now I get 199 plus 1 squared minus 199 squared. And from here, I can use an algebraic property that states that if I have something in the form a plus b squared, this is equal to a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. So 199 plus 1 squared, I'm going to write as 199 squared plus 2 times 199 times 1 plus 1 squared. And at the end, I have minus 199 squared. And now this is equal to, I can cancel these two out, 2 times 199 times 1 plus 1 squared. And 2 times 90, 199 times 1 is the same thing as 2 times 199. And 1 squared is the same thing as 1. So I have 2 times 199. And this is going to equal 398. And I have this plus 1, which is equal to 399. So my answer is 399. And that was method one. Now for method two, I have 200 squared minus 199 squared. And now I'm going to rewrite 199 as 200 minus 1 squared. So now I get 200 squared minus 200 minus 1 squared. And a minus b squared is equal to a squared minus 2ab plus b squared. So 200 minus 1 squared is going to equal 2 times 200 times 1 plus 1 squared. And this is equal to 200 squared minus 400 plus 1. And this is equal to 200 squared minus 399. And remember, we have 200 squared minus all of this. So I get 200 squared minus 200 squared minus 399, which is equal to 200 squared minus 200 squared plus 399, because we distribute the negative. And these two cancel out, so all I'm left with is 399. Now, finally, for my third and final method, I have 200 squared minus 199 squared. And this time, I'm not going to change these two. I'm just going to directly use the algebraic property that states that a squared minus b squared is equal to a plus b times a minus b. So this turns into 200 plus 199 times 200 minus 199. Now 200 plus 199 is equal to 399. And 200 minus 199 is simply just equal to 1. So I get 399 times 1. And obviously, anything times 1 is itself. So this just results in 399. And this method was probably the easiest one, just because it took the least amount of time and the least amount of steps. But thank you for watching, and please make sure to subscribe and leave a like.
All right, so in this video, I'm gonna be proving to you guys that pi is equal to three. So as you guys probably already know, pi is an irrational number, meaning it doesn't have a whole number value and it's actually equal to 3.14159 and on and on so forth forever. So that's why it's an irrational number. It's to just don't stop going. So in this video, I'm gonna be proving to you guys that pi is actually equal to three and not the irrational number that we all know it is. So what I'm first gonna do is start with the statement x is equal to pi plus three over two. So all I'm doing is I'm giving a value to a variable which is completely illegal, which is completely legal. So now what I'm gonna do is multiply both sides by two. So I get two times X is equal to pi plus three over two times two. Now two times X is equal to two X. So I get two X is equal to, these two twos cancel out, pi plus three. So I get 2x is equal to pi plus 3. And now from here, I'm going to multiply both sides by pi minus 3. So I have pi minus 3 times 2x is equal to pi plus 3 times pi minus 3. Now, pi plus 3 times pi minus 3 I'm going to distribute the pi so I get pi squared plus 3 pi minus 3 pi, which they just simply cancel out, plus 3 pi minus 3 pi, these two cancel out, and then I have minus 9 at the end. So this is, I can just say this is pi squared minus 9, and for my left hand side, I can distribute the 2x so I get 2x pi minus 6x. And now from here, I'm going to add x squared on both sides. So I have x squared plus 2x pi minus 6x is equal to pi squared minus 9 plus x squared. And let me just reorder this real quick. I'm gonna write this as x squared minus six x plus nine, so I'm gonna add nine on both sides, is equal to x squared minus two pi x, so I'm gonna subtract two pi x on both sides. And at the end, plus pi squared. So I have x squared minus 6x plus 9 is equal to x squared minus 2 pi x plus pi squared. And now x squared minus 6x plus 9, this factors out into x minus 3 squared. And x squared minus 2 pi x plus pi squared is the same thing as x minus pi squared. So I have x minus 3 squared is equal to x minus pi squared. And now, I want to cancel these two squares, so I'm going to take the square root on both sides. So now the square root of x minus 3 squared is equal to x minus 3, and the square root of x minus pi squared is equal to x minus pi. So I get x minus 3 is equal to x minus pi. So now I'm going to cancel these two x's out by subtracting x on both sides. So now I get negative 3 is equal to negative pi, and now if I multiply both sides by negative 1, I get pi is equal to 3. So there you have it. I just proved that pi is equal to 3. So now where did I go wrong? Because obviously we know that pi is not equal to 3. So where did I go wrong? Well, I actually went wrong on this step right here where I said that the square root of x minus 3 squared and the square root of x minus pi squared is equal to x minus 3 and x minus pi respectively. Well, this is actually not true. 
the square root of x minus 3 squared isn't equal to x minus 3, is equal to the absolute value of x minus 3. And same goes with the square root of x minus pi squared. It's not equal to x minus pi. It's equal to the absolute value of x minus pi. So the reason this is so important is because now I get x minus 3 is equal to negative x minus pi. Or also negative x minus 3 is equal to positive x minus pi, since we're taking the absolute value of these two. So if we want to solve x minus 3 is equal to negative x minus pi, we're going to have to first distribute the negative sign. So I get x minus 3 is equal to negative x plus pi. So now if I add x on both sides, these two cancel out. So I get 2x is equal to 3 plus pi. And x is equal to 3 plus pi over 2, which going back is what we started with. So there you have it. That is something really important to know that the absolute value is, or sorry, the square root of a square isn't just the normal version, it's the absolute value of that.